Hey guys, it's time for your weekly resources from your youth leaders. This week we're going to be talking about Bible atlases. Now I have my ESV Bible atlas right here, which I just got for Christmas. Um, but what I'm going to be talking about applies to pretty much any Bible atlas that you're going to see. So, um, this is just an example. So, um, Bible atlases, they're not just a bunch of maps, um, like any atlas. I'm going to just show you a few things that we can learn from Bible atlas. So, a lot of atlases will have pages like this with a lot of writing, and they tell us things about, um, the culture and the area where things happened in the Bible. Uh, so, for example, we have this map here which shows us what Israel looked like in the time of Elijah and Elisha, and you even see where Elijah fled from Jezreel down to the, the wilderness. You can see that. You can see different towns that were um, around at the, at the time, that sort of thing. Um, so they'll have these little maps that are just like drawn, um, and they don't have a whole lot of detail. Um, you can learn about different cities so they'll have uh this is the city of babylon for example here um and it'll show you oh look the river euphrates runs right through the city of babylon and that actually becomes really important later on in the story of babylon which uh maybe we'll tell you about that sometime so you can learn what different cities look like um often a bible at this will have uh, the the setup of different buildings. For example, this is the temple that was uh, built by King Herod in the New Testament. Um, and this one is really cool. It's got zoom out or in to the temple. So this is the whole temple complex here. And if you zoom in to like the... This is basically where the Jews could enter but not the Gentiles and then if you zoom in even further this is the the temple building part and then it, sh it shows you different things about like um this is the inner sanctuary and uh this is where the high priest could go once a year and that sort of thing so that's kind of cool another thing um again you can see cities this is Jerusalem in the time of Herod and you can see just how big this is the temple and this is the city. So you can see just how big Jerusalem was or the temple was in comparison to Jerusalem or how big the Pool of Siloam was and that sort of thing. Um, and it'll just point out all these different here's Herod's Palace and the Praetorium, which is like, I forget what that was. Over here is Golgotha where Jesus was crucified, or they think where it was, that sort of thing. Um, I know you can't see it very well on here, but it's really cool to just look through these sorts of things and be like, oh, that's where that happened. Um, another thing you can see what places look like now. So this is the theater in Ephesus where um, there was a riot when Paul was there. And it's still there today, so you can see real life pictures of this is what it looks like today, and this is how big it is. Like these are people down here, and this is the whole like seating arrangement thing. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, okay, and then towards the back of the atlas, you get to these actual like big maps that have you know, oh, here you can see there's mountains, and there's mountains over here, and. Here's the water and the degrees and latitude and longitude and that sort of thing. And um, so here we have a map of Egypt. Here's Lower Egypt and uh, Upper Egypt down here. Here's the Red Sea and um, the two gulfs that branch off of it. And up here we have the lower half of uh, Israel, Canaan, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a Bible atlas. There's so many different things you can look at. Uh, for example, I used the temple drawings in Sunday school last week, and this week I'm using that map of Elijah, uh, in my Bible study. Okay, and then another thing that you can do in the Bible if you're looking, so say you're reading 
and you find, um, say, the city of, um, let's see, Caesarea Philippi, and you want to know where that is. So you can look it up because most atlases will have an index. So down here we've got Caesarea Philippi, and it's got, um, so these, these numbers are like, it's like chapter 12, map 22 type of thing. You'll, you'll always have to figure out how they do that. So, got this. And then, um, they have the same thing for those big regional maps. Um, so let's look at this area of Philippi again. Can I spell this area of Philippi? Here we go, over here. So it'll give you the latitude and longitude on the map. So it's R is, this is a regional map. So it's one of those big maps, um, not in the regular chapters. And um, so like map 11. So R11, if we go looking for it, um, almost there. That's R12. Here we go. Here's R11, and then we could find Caesarea Philippi, which I did not look at the coordinates to be able to do so. Okay, so something else that is cool uh, that relates back to what we talked about, I think, last week is that often um, atlases will give you a timeline of biblical history. You, you do have to be careful with these because archaeology is not um, like a fixed. We definitely know every single thing that happened. So sometimes the timelines are not entirely accurate. Um, and they might not even line up with biblical events just because of biases in certain archaeological um, areas of study. But uh, yeah, so you can see, so this is, you've got the timeline of Egypt lining up with the timeline of Palestine and Mesopotamia. This is early... And it just keeps going through. And then you've got like the kings of Israel and Judah in order. You've got the Herodian dynasty. Don't look at this unless you want to be really grossed out. But like it kind of just shows you how messed up and interconnected all the royal people were. So you can see Herod the Great. And, and it's got like the biblical... Um, references so the Herod in Matthew 2 and Luke 1 that's Herod the Great and then if you go to say Luke 3 it's Herod Philip the first or uh oh look here's Felix who shows up in Acts 24 he's related to the Herods and yeah and then here's Herodias who is the one that got John the Baptist killed and yeah, so you can check out things like that. So they have fun things like that. This one, I don't know if all atlases would have this, but they would have cool things like, oh, here we go. This is the calendar of, um, like the Jewish calendar. So you can see where all of the different, um, festivals and feasts are. It shows you it shows you the the months and how, like what month they correspond to on our calendar. It shows you when they're harvesting like olives, and, like what season or over here is where they harvest the flax and the barley. It shows you where the seasons are, so they they don't really have like spring and summer and that, but they have like early rains and winter rains and uh, latter rains. And then over here they've got the dry season. So that was really cool for me to find. So, yeah, if you have a Bible atlas in your home, or if you want to take a look at one in the church library, um, it really can help you with finding just different things that you wouldn't even think of. So, yeah, that is the Bible atlas.